Today we're going to take a look at these Arduino Nano clones that I found on Amazon really cheap. There's a few projects I want to build that require microcontrollers, but when you're building personal projects, spending $20 for one when you can get three for $14, it's hard to beat. Most of the time, I'm not even sure my projects are going to work in the first place. This comes nicely packaged. It's from Rexquilis. Never heard of them, but... They also don't use the normal FTDI chips that the genuine Arduinos use. They use the CH340, and that's pretty common on all of the kind of knockoff Arduinos. Um, so you need to load different drivers in order to make this talk to your computer through USB. Um, you can get the drivers at their website, but I would suggest going to the manufacturer's website. I'll put the link down below and always check them for viruses because these chinese made things are sketchy so in the box we have the three nanos three usb cables and the card with instructions that we'll read later. Oh, a lot of foam packaging in there. There we go. So a little bit of foam to protect the pins. This doesn't look like it's any kind of anti-static foam, but you know, 13 bucks. These boards look really clean, really well done. Solder connections look great. They also come with the header pins already attached, which is awesome. Some other clone makers have really bad soldering jobs. That's why you get all these weird connection issues. These look surprisingly well built for the price. So after downloading the CH340 drivers from the manufacturer's website and installing them, we're ready to open the Arduino IDE and set up to test this board. So with our board plugged in, we'll choose board type of Arduino Nano. For processor type, we're going to choose the 328 old bootloader. Now most of the clones on the market use the old bootloader, and this is usually where people get stuck. If you select the wrong bootloader, you won't be able to upload to the chip. It doesn't cause any damage, but it can be frustrating. Then we'll select our serial port, in this case COM4. We'll load the standard blink test sketch and attempt to upload it to the board. Using the old bootloader, this is a bit slower. The old bootloader transfer speed is only 57K, so it takes twice as long to upload a sketch to the board. This is another reason why updating the bootloader to the newest format is worth doing. Looking at our board, we can see the blinking LED, so our first nano clone is working. Now we'll upload the same sketch to the other two boards and make sure they work as well. So all of our boards are running the blink test with no issues. This was a great deal for just $14 to get three nanos with USB cables to use in our upcoming projects. In our next video, I'll show you how to update the bootloader to the newest version, which fixes the random reset bug, takes up less memory, leaving more space for your own sketches, and basically makes this clone an up-to-date Arduino. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please place them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.